Hey, what's up there guys? So today I'm going to show you how to replace the laser on your PS2. Uh, fat. So, depending on which model PS2 fat you have, um, there's different model types. Uh, sometimes they have to do with the first two beginning letters of the serial number, uh, depending on what laser you need. Other times they just need the um, model number. So this is SCPH30001. And this one is compatible with the 400C laser. So today you'll be needing just a standard size screwdriver um, tweezer spudgers or a flathead screwdriver if you have it and then you'll also be needing a smaller size screw bit and <clears throat> most likely you'll need a soldering iron and soldering wick depending on uh, what company you order the laser from um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with my soldering iron um, so when you get the lasers oftentimes they have a small blob of solder on them uh, which will prevent the laser from reading discs. Um, see this uh, this little itty bitty blob of solder right there. You're gonna want to take that off. Now that that's taken off, should be good. Set that to the side for now. And then, we get started on this buddy. So, first you're going to want to remove your, uh, your old warranty sticker. And you can uh, use a razor blade or screwdriver to get this off or just peel it off. doesn't really matter that much anymore because it's been years since uh, they were valid. Alright, now that that's taken care of, um, depending on the type of PS2 you have, um, they'll have like all these uh, little legs all over the place so you're gonna want to take all of those out and the little rubber ones are the actual legs um, fitted to uh, raise the console and not make it scratch whatever surface and then the rest of these are plastic um, so just remember when you put it back together to uh, put the rubber ones on the part that's gonna lay flat on your uh, on your surface next up and you may need a magnet for uh, for some of these a fairly strong magnet sometimes they uh, 
they don't want to come all the way out and can be a little bit of a annoying process um, but you want to go ahead and remove all these screws and some of these screw sizes are different as well um, I believe from if the uh, if the console itself is standing um, standing upright from what we would consider the bottom if it's standing upright so it goes from big and small so on this one in particular um, four big screws uh, at the bottom and the middle and then four small screws at the top Uh, these buddies don't want to come out because they're uh, they're pretty small so and you can either use a, use a magnet or uh, use uh, your spudgers or a flathead screwdriver use the magnet all right now that that's taken care of uh, the next part of the process is uh, you gotta be pretty gentle so you're gonna want to raise the uh, the back of the PS2 shell from upward and then kind of wiggle it off and depending on the uh, model of your PS2 the uh, the reset and eject button are right here so just to make things a little bit easier on yourself um, you can go ahead and uh, pop it out of there and be careful That way, the whole top of it is out of our way. Next, we'll need the uh, small Phillips head screwdriver and take out all these screws. Now this is the piece that uh, covers your laser and also keeps your games uh, in place. So this is an important piece, but 
we're gonna set it to the side for now and then take off the uh, disc tray remove those two screws and then um, with the disc tray um, you kind of have to be particular about how you do it so lift up this part here first and then slide it out a little bit and then lift it up and then you pull it out all the way so now we can set this to the side next up we want to remove this screw here and that one's the only one that I find absolutely necessary to remove um, because we can do the rest like this so just lift this side up uh, you pull that bar out and then the laser it has uh, two little hinges here and you're gonna wanna unclip those with either your screwdriver or your nail and then depending on where you order the laser from you may not get this piece with your laser so we can go ahead and uh, recycle that You also may need this small screw here. So this requires uh, a very small torque wrench. Um, I believe you may also be able to get it out with a very, very small uh, flathead screwdriver. Um, but typically um, you want to lube up these bars um, and then lube up the tracks as well uh, very lightly um, but I'm not gonna do that today today I'm just going to work on the laser so that small torque screw um, that I showed you you're going to want to not screw that in all the way. You're going to want to screw it in just so it's barely down on the inside in here. Um, that will balance it out on the, uh, on the track here. Next, I'm going to put the uh, track guide on the laser itself. And you don't want to do that super tight, um, just to where it's a uh, tight and flush with the laser there so we're gonna go ahead and uh, insert the uh, track bar in here and then for this one you uh, pop out those little legs like you did with the uh, with the other one that you're taking out you insert the ribbon cable to where it's a uh, it's flush with the laser and once that's in there nice and good you pop those little legs back up
sometimes they can be a little fidgety and if you don't do it right let's see there we go that one popped out if you don't do it right it'll either pop out or have issues um, connecting so Make sure those click in there nice and good. There we go. That one clicked in good. Alright. So now we're set. We can lay this back in on that track there. And insert the bar, make sure it um, it goes into this part here first, and then you can lay it flat down. I'm going to want to replace that, uh, that flat Phillips head screw that you removed from there. Go ahead and put that back on. Next is the dish tray. Basically, you just reassemble like you disassembled. Um, once you get to uh, once you get to uh, putting the shell back on, um, that's where it comes in. Uh, a little tricky. Also with the uh, when you're putting the disc tray back on, those uh, those screws there, um, you don't want to do them too tight. Um, just make it to where it's uh, it's flush there, um, not super tight. Otherwise, you may have uh, issues with your disc tray um, opening and closing. And you kind of want to do the same with uh, most of the other screws. Um, they don't necessarily need to be too tight. Um, just to where they're flush with the plastic there. Um, if you over tighten things, um, it can be an issue. So once, once it feels like it stops um, with a decent little amount of torque, um, it should be good. Now with the, uh, the screws on the bottom, once you reassemble, um, some of them may be a little bit tricky, um, but I'll get to that in a second. Now, for putting this back on, um, this this can be a little tricky as well. Um, you're gonna want to make sure uh, this ribbon cable here is uh, tucked over, kind of like this. You see. Um, so you want to kind of tilt it up diagonally when you're putting it in and uh, get those buttons in the spot there and then there's a little connecting piece of plastic uh, that can be a little shifty, tricky There we go. And then, once you have that on there, you want to make sure uh, that ribbon cable lays flat there. So, you want to reassemble like you disassembled and have this part go first and then lay it down in the back. Next, um, 
with all the uh, underside screws that we uh, disassembled. I found that uh, when you reassemble them, um, I don't know if anybody was taught this old trick, but uh, sometimes they, they just don't want to do it. So you turn it left until you hear it click, and then turn it right. Um, I was taught that trick years ago um, for soda bottles, um, because sometimes the, uh, the threads won't sit correctly and it makes it harder to screw. Um, so if you turn it left um, first until you hear it click, um, you, you'll have an easier time getting it back together. So I'll just pop those two screws back in and um, don't forget to uh, make the uh, four rubber legs into the corner. Um, but there you have it. That's, uh, that's a laser replacement for PS2 fat. Um, so if you found this uh, video helpful, uh, like, comment if you'd like, um, subscribe if you want. Um, hopefully this helps you out for your uh, PS2 fat and um, you won't have any issues anymore. Um, most commonly uh, blue discs don't get red, but also um, PS1 discs won't read when, uh, um, when you need a laser replacement. I would also recommend uh, getting your discs refurbished before you go about putting a new laser in. Uh, just do that with disc repair services. Um, if, uh, if you do need a laser replacement though, um, by all means go ahead and do it. Uh, but that's how you replace a PS2 fat laser. Um, so thanks for watching and have a great day.